my channel, Sofa to Makery. I'm Catherine and I'm back. <laughs> my goodness me, it feels like absolutely ages since I've got to talk to you all. So I hope you are all really, really well. And I hope 2024 has treated you well. Um, I can't believe that, yeah, I haven't been on here for so long. I think it's about six months. So I'm very sorry to everybody that's been uh, holding on and waiting. <laughs> and thank you so much if you have been holding on and waiting, because it's just so lovely that I've got some lovely subscribers that have been checking in with how I am. And yeah, I can't believe it's been so long since I've been talking about sewing. I really can't believe it. So yeah, I hope you are all really, really well. So what have I been up to? I can't believe it's been so, so long. I think the last time I spoke to you was possibly just after the, the Stitch Festival in March. Um, so yeah, it's been a long old time. <laughs> so life has just been, yeah, really, really busy, which I'm sure it is for lots of you as well. But yeah, life has just been absolutely manic. So um, yeah, let's start with why I haven't really been on. So the main reason is I've been working a lot. So as probably lots of you know, if you've been following me for a while, um, I'm a nanny. But then last summer, I sort of changed the direction of my work just slightly. And I trained to become a maternity nurse. And in January this year, I also trained to become an infant feeding coach um, so that I can support mothers with and families with their feeding, whatever they decide is right for them. So yeah, I've been sort of changing how I work slightly. So now I am maternity nursing, um, it's much more full on for a chunk of time and then you get periods of time off. So from, when was it, the beginning of May up until the 1st of October, I've been working with my last family um, who they had their newborn baby boy and I started working when he was two days old and they brought him home from hospital. And yeah, I was with him until he was five months on the dock pretty much. And um, yeah, I was with him 24 six, so 24 hours a day, six days a week. Um, so I was only getting one 24 hour period off. Um, and in that time I was spending at home with Kirsty and Sebastian and whoever else I could find in my family that I could see um, and so the 24 hours you do get a little three hour window of time off so often on those three hours I was very lucky the job was very close so I could pop home quickly which was lovely um, but yeah life was just manic I was just working non-stop so um, yeah it's just been so so busy but what a lovely job it was the baby yeah uh, he's now five months old and yeah so lovely happy smiley gorgeous little baby baby I left them in very good stead he was only waking I think once in the night for a feed and yeah being a very good boy sleeping well in his cot so yeah felt very proud and um yeah so very very lucky and I will still get to see them which is lovely and um, they only live about yeah 15 20 minutes from where I live so yeah I'll be able to go and pop and see him which is wonderful and yeah I've got a few dates um that I'm going back to them in December and in November so that will be lovely but for now I'm taking a little bit of time off which is rather lovely um yeah to not be racing backwards and forwards yeah and to be at home with Kirsty and Sebastian is just wonderful I've missed them terribly as you can imagine uh so yeah it's so nice to be back home and be settled and yeah back in my sewing room a little bit although it's an absolute tip in here um I've been trying to do some sewing but yeah I've had a little tidy up but there's just a lot of stuff in here we've had to move some stuff out of our other spare room into here which just means that yeah the the room is just slowly <laughs> creeping in on me there's not much room left um but yeah um it's just lovely to be back home I missed a lot and I miss my sewing room a lot um so yeah well I've written a little list here because I knew I'd forget stuff before I forget what am I wearing um you've probably seen this before if not um I've definitely posted about it on Instagram this is the Mabel sweatshirt by Fiber Mood and I did this, this was a project I did with the lovely Katie from So So So. I did a blog post for her and yeah, used this lovely French terry, um, which is gorgeous and it has these fabulously big sleeves. Um, yeah, and I really like it. So yeah, just, just, in, case, just in case you were wondering what I was wearing. Um, so yeah, where was I? So I've talked about work. I was going to also talk to you about how my work is going to change slightly. So going into maternity nursing was a bit of a new venture for me, as I've explained, and... I went into it wholeheartedly because I absolutely love babies and it's wonderful to be able to be there for families and supporting them in such a sort of delicate time of life when actually you need a lot of love and care um, and I was very honoured to be able to do that job. But looking back on the last five, six months of work, 
it's become quite apparent that actually being away at this time when Sebastian is still quite young, um, it's not actually really working for our family setup. Um, and yeah, poor Kirsty has been solo parenting pretty much for five months. <laughs> yeah, it's not really working for yeah, just us as a family. We we need to be together. So um, we're changing slightly what I'm doing for work. So I'm going to keep with the same skills. Sorry, quite itchy nose. Excuse me. Um, we're going to change with the keep with the skills that I've sort of just sort of re so i've been learning about so with, with the newborn still but i'm going to start night nannying more long term instead of maternity nursing so night nannying which you may have heard of but if you haven't i'll explain it um night nannying is where you go in and you will do probably a 12 hour shift probably something like 7 p.m to 7 a.m or 6 p.m to 6 a.m depending on what the family wants um and you go in and you support the parents with the baby at night so potentially you will just have the baby you will feed baby if they're bottle fed you'd feed them win them pop them back to sleep and just to keep doing the feeds until the morning and then you'd hand over in the morning give baby back um and it's all within their home like you don't take the baby anywhere um or if they're breastfeeding you will have baby if baby wakes and you feel they're ready for a feed you'll take them to mum mum will feed and then you'll take baby back again so the idea is that it gives mums and dads especially if mum is breastfeeding even if they're not if they're bottle feeding it gives them a break um and even if they're breastfeeding you're just bringing baby for feeds and then you're going to the settling and the winding so it means that they actually do get some sleep and some rest which is important especially when you've had a baby and yeah you're absolutely drained and exhausted so that's what I'm going to start doing and I've got two lovely families lined up which I'm very excited about um both in London and yeah I'm going to be doing three or four maybe five nights a week night nannying between these families and yeah it just means I'll go up to London on say a Monday afternoon I'll do Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday maybe Friday nights and then I'll come home on say a Friday morning and I've got the rest of the weekend which is actually much better for our family life and in the daytime it means I can have a bit of time to myself either to just sleep or I can do a bit of sewing and in the day I'm going to be very very lucky and stay with my old family who are up in London and yeah they've got a little room for me to go and rest in and chill in uh, so I'm so so lucky um so yeah that's our sort of my sort of work plan going forward but it does mean there'll be more sewing hopefully and a little bit more of YouTube I think I'm going to dedicate Monday mornings to video recording uh, <laughs> so yeah hopefully it won't be quite as uh long <laughs> from when I last did a video to when you keep getting videos <laughs> because yeah that's too long too long for all of us I mean I've missed you terribly um so yeah that's all the work stuff let's get that out of the way um I thought we'd talk about um, what we have been up to as a family. So when I just finished my job at the beginning of October, um, Kirsty's very clever. She books all our holidays. I'm so lucky. She books them because she knows that we need things to look forward to. And she just does times them perfectly. So yeah, I finished my job. And then three days later, we went to Turkey for a holiday. And oh my goodness, it was so lovely. Oh, we took Sebastian out of school, which we're not meant to. So we'll get a nice fine. Thank you very much. Um, but hey, family time is very important, especially after the summer we've had of me working away so yeah we went to turkey it was absolutely gorgeous we went to i think it was near alara i'll write it down below <laughs> i can't remember but we went to a hotel called the pegasus royale and it was a lovely hotel it had three pools um that we could use with various water slides and then literally just over a little ridge <laughs> it was tiny just up some steps there was the sea and oh my goodness it was beautiful the water was so warm in the sea i'd say it was a good what well, like it felt like you were in a bath it was so warm and sebastian absolutely loved it and we were so proud of him sebastian used to be quite afraid of the water up until about two years ago and he's been doing some swimming lessons with a lady in the village who's absolutely fantastic and really built up his confidence um but yeah he was in the sea having a whale of a time jumping over waves the waves not caring if he got knocked off the rubber ring or into the sea oh it was just fabulous and yeah just what we all needed really i mean we could have spent two weeks there but it was absolutely beautiful whilst i've been talking hopefully i've been putting some pictures in of our holiday but yeah it was gorgeous um so yeah, that's what that's pretty much our news. <laughs> Me working and then us going on holiday. <laughs> Um, but I have done a little bit of sewing so I thought I'd share with you what I have sewn there haven't been very many things because the time off that I have had has just been very minimal so when I have been home it's been all about spending time as a family and yeah, doing family things which has been lovely but yeah it does mean sewing really was on the back burner but I did get a couple of things done so the first one is something that I've been meaning to do for an absolute age um 
It's a quilt that I was asked to make last summer for a lovely lady in the village who was a childminder and she was getting married. And two of the parents came to me and said, look, we've got this idea for a quilt. Please, could you let us know if it's something you think you could help us with? And I said, yeah, of course, come on, let's have They came round for a chat and a coffee and we talked it through. And um, yeah, I said, yeah, 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 I can do it. But then didn't really think about the fact that life gets in the way and I couldn't actually get it done in time. So then in the end, it became a present for her first anniversary because I was still working on this quilt for absolutely ages, but just didn't get it completed in time for her actual wedding. So yeah, it became her first anniversary present. And um, so yeah, this quilt, what we did is we did, I think it was 15 squares and each square had a picture that the, one of the children of this childminder that what, that she looks after had drawn. So all the children that she looked after had drawn a picture and some of them written their name and their age and then in the middle of the quilt we had their wedding invitation that I copied and I cliqued and um, machine embroidered and then um, also a little image of a cup that they'd have put on a cup for the wedding so they were plastic cups and then excuse me they had this image put on them and yeah I copied that and put it on so yeah it was lots of applique and um, machine embroidery so I copied all the children's pictures with machine embroidery onto fabric and then put it all together so oh it was quite a lot of work and um, I'm just so pleased it was done but I thought I'd just show you so what we I will put up here hopefully at some point a video of what the quilt looks like and some pictures but there were various things so like this was the invitation that we had to copy um, and then this was the image that was on the cups um that i had to copy as well and then there were loads and loads of drawings so the children's drawings are all in here i won't show them all but um yeah there were loads and loads of children i'll see if i can get there were some that were really quite um intricate um so yeah there were lots and lots of um pictures that the children had drawn I mean, lovely Max. <laughs> Max lives just up the road and he likes to watch YouTube. So Max, here's your picture. But you'll be able to see it on the quilt. And um, yeah, where was the one? This was the one. I had to copy this picture with the machine embroidery. This one I left to the end because I was quite scared about it. What a beautiful picture that the child has drawn. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you can see the quilt that I made. And yeah, I'm just so glad that um, the lovely Anna has got and Lee have got their quilt now. And yeah, they were thrilled to bits with it, which is wonderful. And um, yeah, I'm just so glad that it is complete and that they've got it and they love it and they're gonna do, get to enjoy it and use it, which will be wonderful. Um, so yeah, that was one thing that I managed to um, make or finish um another thing that i managed to finish was i or make were a couple of bags so at the end of term when sebastian finished in year two he's getting very old now um he i decided that we'd make the teacher and the teaching assistant a bag and i used a fabulous hipster pouch pattern by the gorgeous adam sows um so yeah what we did is yeah i made them a bag each and they were sort of specific to what their hobbies were so his teacher really loved sloth so i found some sloth fabric and the teaching assistant she really loves sailing so I found some boat fabric and they went down really really well they absolutely loved them and it was really fun to make those and um yeah fabulous pattern by Adam I'm sure you all know all about Adam's fabulous patterns but if you don't I'll make sure I link his patterns be below um for the hipster pouch and yeah I've got one that I use and I absolutely love it and actually I've started doing some sewing with a local girl Alice that I used to do lessons with but we've just started those back up again now I'm back and um yeah we're making a hipster pouch for her and yeah she's really excited about it I left her quilting all the fabric together um when I saw her last week on Saturday um so yeah that was another thing I made and then one more thing that I made during that time I decided I wanted to try and enter something for So Fruity which I have never managed to do before um but it's a brilliant challenge and i thought yeah i'm going to try and do something so i made a scout tea um and i made it in the gorgeous liberty fabric that the wonderful darren which is adam so's his husband um bought for me and yeah i decided i only had a meter and yeah i managed to get a lovely scout tea out of it and it's a lovely purple with all the fruits on i'll make sure i put some pictures in and um yeah i was really pleased with that um even though yeah <laughs> i managed to squeeze it out on not much sleep <laughs> and a bit of time off um so yeah that's all i've really sewed i really haven't had any time to sew but i have had plenty of time to buy fabric when baby sleeps i mean the internet is there isn't it so <laughs> i thought i would share with you quite a big haul of fabric i don't know if you could quite see it in here um so yeah i thought i would share with you those fabrics 
um, and then tell you what I'm up to at the moment. Um, and before I start showing you the fabrics, I must show you this. So when I was working for my last family, they had a PA and the PA was called Dawn. And um, Dawn has become a firm friend of mine. Um, she is wonderful. She would go and sneak out and buy me chocolate bars when I was really tired and needed a chocolate bar. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she was wonderful. I'd become a firm friend and I got her back into sewing. And um, she actually came to, I held a meet and stitch um, last week. I must tell you all about that in a minute. Um, and yeah, she was wonderful. I've got her back into sewing, which I'm really excited about. But um, she bought me this fabulous card, which is so cool, isn't it? You are so awesome. You're so awesome, Dawn. I absolutely love the card. And she bought me a, a lovely sewing project planner, which I'm sure you have all seen. Um, and before, and if you haven't, they're fabulous. Inside you um have a page where you can put various bits of information about your projects, and I find this useful not only for going back and having a look at say adjustments that I've made but I find it really useful when I'm doing videos like this where I'm trying to explain the project that I've done and yeah I've got all the information here I've already got one of these but I pretty much filled my first one so thank you Dawn I've got another one for when that other my other one runs out um so yeah going back to quickly sorry this is a bit of a rambly video video of just full of information thank goodness you don't have to take notes <laughs> You would have run out of paper by now. Um, what I was going to say, um, last Friday, I was really lucky to host a sewing social with my wonderful friend, Adam, who you all know as Adam Sews. He, um, we got together and hosted a sewing social to raise money for a hospice called the Phyllis Tuckwell Hospice. And this was in aid of one of the ladies that used to come to my sewing social. She got diagnosed with cancer earlier this year and sadly died a couple of months later. And um, she was a wonderful lady called Elaine and was a hoot at all the classes and very good friends with a lovely lady called Christine. Um, and yeah, we were so sad when we heard that she had passed away. Um, but yeah, we decided to have a social and all profits were going to go to the hospice. And I'm absolutely delighted to say that we raised over £400 for the hospice, which I need to send off this week um, in memory of the lovely Elaine. So yeah, it was a wonderful day. Lovely to see lots of people that came. Oh, lots of regulars that have been going for years since I've started these meet and stitches and Adam as well. I had people coming from Essex, from Norfolk, from, oh, where did um Jenny say, and lovely Jenny, I can't remember where she said she's from. I t she told me and I've completely forgotten, but hello, lovely Jenny. Um, and lovely Sue was on FaceTime, <laughs> love her, which was wonderful. Yeah, loads of people, lovely Claire from Stitch Home So came, Claire the Sewing Bear came, my mum came, um, Dawn came, and then Laura the Specky Seamstress came. We had the lovely Laura um, and her friends from Essex. And yeah, all my regulars, Michelle and Tina and Helen. Yeah, all the lovely ladies. Um, it was just wonderful to get everyone together. So yeah. I felt like, yeah, it was a very wholesome day. Felt very, very lucky. And um, yeah, it was a lovely, lovely day and a really worthy, worthy cause. So yeah. So I think, yeah, I'll stop rabbiting on. Let's get on with the fabric, shall we? Because otherwise this video is going to be about four hours long and you're all going to need a sleep. <laughs> so this is my massive pile of fabric. So as I said, even though I wasn't sewing, I did have time to still buy fabric. Um, not all of this I bought um some of it was actually gifted so the first little pile which is this little pile here i'll go out like this um was actually gifted to me by the family that i have just finished my job with and one of their family members uh lives in delhi and was telling me all about the fabulous fabric shops there and they said well why don't we buy you a leaving present from delhi so yeah when she came back over for my charges christening she came with this lovely bag <laughs> of fabrics and these are what she bought um which is so so kind and some of them yeah they're, they're absolutely beautiful and some of them are really quite unusual i think as well so the first one sorry it's really creased um i don't know if you can see it's got a bit of like a shimmer to it um oh hold on someone's putting something to the letterbox it sounds like yeah sorry just ignore that probably amazon um <laughs> um yeah this is a lovely lovely cotton and it's got a bit of a sheen to it i think it must be the way it's been woven um and yeah what did it say on the bottom of it it says it is oh hold on let's do that a bit a high quality a high sorry i can't read upside down a high quality design collection made from super fine 100 percent geezer cotton and it's absolutely beautiful. And I've got three metres of this. I love the colour. 
Um, and I think I'm going to make myself the most luxury pair of pyjamas out of this with, I think, some ivory piping. I've got the um, Carolyn pyjamas pattern um, and I just think they would it would make the most fabulous pair of pyjamas, wouldn't it? With lovely piping and maybe some pretty buttons. Um, so, yeah, that's the first fabric from Delhi. Um, I'm going to try and fold these up, but that's just not going to happen. Let's put them down there. Um, the next fabric is a gorgeous linen and it made me laugh. This one's from Ireland. It says it's an Irish linen. Um, it's obviously done quite a lot of toing and froing around the world. Um, but yeah, it's this absolutely gorgeous linen in this fabulous teal colour. Absolutely love this fabric. Isn't it gorgeous? Um, and yeah, it's a lovely, lovely, it's opaque. And I think it would make a brilliant Zadie jumpsuit. I'll just show you the drape of it a little bit. But it's beautiful, isn't it? Lovely, lovely teal colour. So yeah, I think a Zadie jumpsuit out of that at some point would be wonderful. Then the next one is a wonderful cotton which i think is a block print cotton in this gorgeous pink oh, i should have said i think i've got about three meters of the linen as well yeah sorry this is a block print cotton in a lovely pink with the lovely it's got these sort of teal and orange flower designs on them um it's really lovely i think this has to be made into some kind of summer dress maybe a myosotis um or Maybe a Lyra, um, or maybe a lovely blouse, maybe a Marnie. Um, oh, there's lots of options, but it's beautiful. It's a lovely, lovely cotton. Um, and yeah, I think I've got two and a half metres of that one. Um, and then the final one is a beautiful silk. And I think I've got two metres of this, or a me two metres or a metre and a half. And I'm hoping you can see how gorgeous it is. And it, uh, it's a lovely sort of jade green. But it's shot, I think. And so you get different sort of colours that come out of it. Sort of a brighter blue and a darker green. And oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's got quite a lot of structure to it. Um, I show you one piece of it. And yeah, it holds its shape quite well. It's got quite a lot of structure. Um, but I'm thinking I need to make something out of this. I mean, this is a special fabric. Um, but I'm thinking I want to try and use this for my frocktails outfit for when I go to Plymouth Frocktails, which is being organised by the wonderful Angela of Devon Thread Tales and the lovely Lizzie of Make Boutique in Plymouth. Um, but yeah, we're going to that in March and I'm very, very excited. But I'm thinking, yeah, I need to make something out of this for frocktails, but I don't know what. I've got about two metres, I think. So I might not be able to make the whole outfit out of it. I need to get my thinking cap on, but I think it would be lovely. And I need to do this fabric justice because it's just beautiful. Um, so yeah, they're my fabrics from Delhi and for my last family, which is such a lovely present to be given. Um, and then this collection of fabrics are fabrics that I've been ordering or getting over the last, yeah, three, four, five months. Um, so yeah, the first one is a lovely double gauze that I got from Higgs and Higgs with these lovely flowers. Am I holding it upside down? You know what? I have no idea, quite possibly. Um, but it's got these lovely sort of multicoloured flowers in. I've got two metres of that. I was thinking of making a Tilly and the Buttons Marnie in that, but that was sort of a summer plan. But as you'll see, quite a lot of these fabrics are quite summery and I've run out of time to do that. But I think a long sleeve Marnie actually in that with a cardigan over the top would be quite nice in the winter. And I think double gauze actually does keep you quite warm. I know it can keep you cool, but I think it keeps you quite warm too. So, yeah, that is one of the fabrics I bought. This fabric I bought when we went camping. So I did have a week off in between my five months of working and that was in July. And we went to uh, France and we went to Eurocamp. Um, and we went to a place, oh, something's stuck on it, sorry. Um, we went to a place called Karnak in France, which some of you may well have heard of. And um, there were, I obviously, when you go on holiday, you Google where there might be fabric shops. And I Googled and there was a fabric shop there. I can't remember what it's called, but I've got some pictures of it. I'll try and put them in. And um, yeah, I bought this lovely gingham, lovely cotton gingham in this pink and red. 
And my thought was that I would make a pair of shorts out of it um, for our holiday to Turkey, but completely ran out of time. So I think I still will make a pair of shorts out of it because I think it'd be fabulous with a white T-shirt. Um, so yeah, so that'll go back in my stash for next year. Um, so yeah, but it was, yeah, it was from Karnak in France. And I just absolutely loved it. It reminded me actually of a cotton gingham I saw on Fabric Godmother. Um, and then the next fabric I got, I got from the lovely Claire, who is Love Red Sews. Um, she was having a D-stash and um, she had this gorgeous viscose on her D-stash page. And I snapped it up. Isn't it beautiful? I absolutely love the colours in it. That red and then that lovely deep pinky purple and these lovely blues and teals. I absolutely love it. This is destined to be a summer dress next year. I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, has not had time to be made up this year. But yeah, next year it definitely will. Um, and the next couple of fabrics are from, oh, what's it called? It's from a local place that I nipped to on one of my breaks one day when I was maternity nursing. And it's called... I think it's called the Chapel Chapel Textile Centre. It's near Newbury. And um, they take donations from people that are getting rid of sewing or crafty items. And then they sell them in their shop. Um, so they're quite unusual bits of fabric. So things that maybe you won't see in other shops. Things that are pr probably quite old as well. Um, so the first one I got was this absolutely beautiful. It's a wool fabric. It is soft as anything on your skin. It is not itchy. It's lovely. Um, and it's got this gorgeous floral design on it. And if I hold up one bit of the fabric for you, it's slightly, you can see through it. But can you see how, yeah, how it moves? It's, it's gorgeous. It's like it's a, um, it's not even as stiff as a cotton, I'd say. I'd say it's, it's softer in drape than a cotton. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful. I love the flowers on it. Um, and I, I think I got, what did it say on it? They label up all their fabrics with how much there is. So it's 112 centimetres wide. So it's similar to a quilting cotton, but there's 2.4 metres and it cost me 10 pounds. I just think it's beautiful. Um, and it has this little label on it saying Jack Ma of London. I don't know if anybody's heard of that. Um, but yeah, I was thinking some kind of blouse for the winter, um, seeing as it's a wool. Um, and I just think, yeah, it'd be absolutely lovely with jeans. Or possibly, I'd really like to get some trousers in like this really deep purpley red. Pinky purpley red. Like a burgundy. Because um, that would look really nice with it, wouldn't it? But yeah, I was really pleased. I snapped that up. I just thought, oh, that's lovely. Um, and then I also saw this lovely, I think it's a poly cotton, but it feels really soft. And it's like a seersucker. It's got that texture to it. Um, and I thought this would be lovely to make a summer top or dress for my niece Saffron. But I haven't got around to making that either. But that's saved, ready for next summer. And hopefully I do have a bit more time on my hands. Right, how are we doing? We're nearly there. The next fabric I bought with the wonderful Adam. We went to Alice Caroline, who sell loads of beautiful vib liberty fabric and all sorts of projects to do with liberty um they were doing a van tour and one um of their spots they went to was near southampton and on one of my days off i said adam are you free and we went together and um yeah i bought this gorgeous meter of this fabric um it's the betsy print um and i just loved that bright bright pink and the sort of purple in it um so yeah i think that's destined to be some kind of blouse i've only got a meter um, but it's quite heavily reduced. I think it was £16 rather than, I think you'd normally spend, for a metre of liberty is normally about £27.95, I think. So yeah, I was really pleased with that and I absolutely love the colours of it. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe a Donny shirt or something like that, that I can get a squeeze out of a metre. Um, and then the next two are from the lovely Ruan, the Yorkshire Sew Girl. She was having a D stash as well and I managed to snap up these beauties. Um... Yeah, she's been selling some lovely fabrics um, and I thought, yeah, I'm going to snap them up. So one of them, I think this, I feel like it's an Atelier, is it Atelier Dupe fabric? I think it is. And it's a lovely viscose with these gorgeous colours in it. I love the teal and the pinks. Um, yeah, absolutely love that. So yeah, that's destined to be a blouse. I think there was a metre and a half, two metres in there. So some kind of blouse in that. 
Um, and then also, this didn't go. And then I said to her, well, well, have you sent the other one yet? Please, can I add this one as well? And she said, quick, snap it up. So this is a lovely... Um, is this Atelier Brunette? Is this where I'm getting really confused? I think this is Atelier Brunette uh, Double Gauze. with the. It's an ivory colour with these lovely goldy dots. Um, and I'm thinking, yeah, a blouse in that as well. Um, I think there'll be enough probably for a three-quarter length sleeve blouse, one that comes down to elbow length. Um, and I see I've got a lovely pattern. I'm, I'll try and put a picture on it here. I think it's called the Emma Blouse. I might have that completely wrong. Um, if not, I'll write down below. But um, it's a new pattern company that I hadn't heard of before. And um, they have this blouse and it's got so many different options. Sleeve options, neckline options, button front, not button front. Um, yeah, I will share hopefully the line drawings, drawings as well. It looks like a fantastic pattern and I think this would be a lovely fabric to try that out in. I want this winter to become sort of the blouse. Ear. I love wearing a blouse and cardigan. Um, so I'm thinking this winter will be all about the blouses. Um, Right, and then the next two fabrics, have you got your sunglasses on? They're quite bright. <laughs> this one, I was so lucky. The lovely Claire, the sewing bear, um, she brought this and put it on the swaps table at our last social on Friday. And look, it's the fabulous fabric that was in the Beyond the Pink door box. I absolutely love it. Isn't it amazing? With lovely, lovely bright pinks in. This is definitely going to have to go away till next summer because this is, I feel, not a winter fabric. But I'm thinking a Tilly in the Buttons Lyra or something like that would be absolutely beautiful in that fabric. So thank you, Claire. Um, she was very sweet. She was like, Catherine, I think you need to take that fabric. I was like, okay, Claire, I will. <laughs> I'll give it a new home. Um, and then the last fabric, I bought this on a bit of a whim just because I was free and I went to um our local my local fabric shop which is Purple Stitches near Basingstoke they do a fabulous selection of bag hardware zips and all that and then quilting cottons but they're actually increasing the amount of dressmaking fabrics they have in there as well and I nipped in there one day it was actually when I was getting the hardware for the bags for the teachers presents and um yeah I thought I'll just have a quick look through the dressmaking fabric as well because I was missing sewing a lot at that point and when you miss sewing you end up buying stuff to do with sewing <laughs> so yeah I had a look and they had this brilliant viscose with all these amazing colours in this colour here hmm, which one is it it's like this colour here on that corner there is my current obsession um and has been for quite a while actually i absolutely love this like really deep pinky purple um i love this fabric but i can't decide if it suits me or not give me your honest opinions i won't be afraid um it's the yellow i'm not sure if the yellow suits me i can see yellow in it there's these bits of yellow um so yeah i don't know i haven't decided i bought a meter and a half of it i can't decide if i really love it or not I, I bought it on a whim because I absolutely love the pink in it. But now I'm not sure about the yellow. Um, so it could be that it becomes a lining for something, like a coat. It'd be a really cool lining, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, haven't quite decided. But yeah, that was something else I bought. Um, right, so showing you everything that I've got over the last five months. I thought I'd quickly go through, sorry, bending down, up, down, up, down. I thought I'd just show you or share with you what I'm actually sewing right now. So one of the projects I'm doing this week is I need to finish it. It's for Sebastian's birthday. Sebastian is eight on Thursday. Where does time go? Um, we've got lots of lovely presents for him. Um, one of them is a ukulele, <laughs> which my sister has also put towards as well. So it's a lovely present. And um, yeah, he's wanted to learn the ukulele for ages. And yeah, we've finally taken the plunge and we think he's old enough and got the concentration to learn a musical instrument. Um, so yeah, that's hopefully arriving in the next few days. But I'm going to make him a card holder, which um, I'm sure Ruan did a video on this or talked about it in one of her vlogmases once. Um, but it's a brilliant uh, card holder. I'll put the link to the video behind, below, not behind, <laughs> below. <laughs> um and it's by studio is it 727 and um, the lovely lady that does lots of bags and um yeah she's got a little tutorial so i'll link that but yeah i'm making a card holder because we're just trying to get him into uno um but he finds it quite hard to sort his cards and hold his cards so yeah i thought i'll make him that and then we can play a bit more as a family and not have to hold his cards or rearrange his cards for him um talking of uno has anybody played uno no mercy Kirsty bought this the other day and oh my goodness now even grown-ups need a card holder for this game there is a plus 10 card in uno no mercy not plus two or plus four it's plus 10 go check it out if you like uno it's fantastic 
um yeah i attempted to make kirsty and i a card holder for that but yeah so that's one project i'm sewing at the moment as a card holder hopefully i'll get that done in the next couple of days that's all my, i've cut it all out i just need to sew it and then the other one are two whips i mean i've got many whips work in progresses um i'm going to do a video on those at some point i know there's been a fabulous challenge that's been going um and i'm hoping that i can enter these into the challenge um I can't remember. Is it Lisa that's running the challenge? I think it's Lisa. I feel really bad that I've got this, possibly got this wrong. But yeah, she's running a brilliant challenge and it's where you're trying to sew up your work in progresses that might be lingering in your cupboards. And I have got a lot of work in progresses. I'm just rustling the folders that they're in up here. And I thought at some point I will go through my work in progresses with you. And um, yeah, maybe you can help me get through one or two of them. <laughs> but I thought I'd just share what I'm sewing at the moment. So... I'm sewing two Libby shirts by Sew Over It. This one in this gorgeous fabric that I bought from Sew Over It. Actually, my mum bought it from Sew Over It for me a long time ago. We went to a sewing class in their Islington shop um, and we learnt to make their ultimate clots, mum and I. And we bought some fabric and mum bought this for me as a present. Um, and that was a long time ago. Are we talking four, five years ago, maybe? Maybe more. Five, six? It was a while ago. Um, I feel like it was 2019. So should we go five years ago? It was definitely before lockdown. Um, and yeah, so I've had this one cut out that long. This is a long whip. And then into this folder, snuck in another one, <laughs> which I started sewing with the lovely Sam in this gorgeous Liberty print. Um, and yeah, so I thought what I'm going to do, because I, I managed to do the collars on both of them. They're in. There's one and then there's two. And I've got this lovely label that, oh, hello, you. <laughs> um, the lovely Tanya um, from Just Let Me Sew. She gave um, some of these labels to a few of us. And yeah, she gave a pack to me. It was lovely. Um, so yeah, I put that one in there. And then I put the Specky Seamstress label in this one. I think it's what's on the inside that counts so yeah what i decided to do because they were both at a similar point is that i just try and batch sew them because then if you're reading an instruction and doing it twice i think it takes less time than reading the instruction doing it and then finishing the project and then going back reading the instructions and yeah do you know what i mean i think if you're doing them both at the same time there's a bit more flow to it so yeah they've both got the collars on this one's got its sleeve on <laughs> this funny little shape here um so i think the next step on this one is i need to just turn out the collar on that facing piece there and then put the sleeves on there and then that one's caught up to this one and then it's a matter of i think you finish the sleeve cuff and then you sew up the sides and then do the buttons so they're very close i mean it looks like it's just a bag of a, a piece of fabric that's all not higgledy piggledy but as you can see well maybe from the back it looks a bit more like it's nearly finished yeah you see the sleeve's going to go there and then do up the sides and then we're getting there. So I'm hoping to finish those. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm working on at the moment. Um, and then, yeah, I think I'll come back to you at some point, hopefully next week. Um, maybe I'll give you a little plans video or I'll go through the whips. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> but I hope you're all really, really well. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me ramble on about what I've been up to, where I've been. And I'm finally back. And thank you so much to everyone that has been there, asked how we are, if I'm still OK. <laughs> <laughs> am I still sewing and am I coming back and I'm here so thank you so so much to each and every one of you it means the world to me that you like to watch along and listen to me talk all about sewing and yeah it's just lovely to be part of this amazing community we were talking about that on Friday uh, on our social sewing social what a lovely community the sewing community is um so yeah thank you so much for listening if you've enjoyed the video please give me a like or a comment and if you are not subscribed please subscribe it'd be lovely to have you here and I promise there will be some more regular content I promise. It won't take me six months to do another one, I promise. <laughs> anyway, happy sewing, lovely ones, and I will see you very soon. Mwah. Bye!